In June 2018, a Ferrari 250 GTO sold for £52 million. A couple of years prior to that one sold for £30 million. The Ferrari 250 GTO is the most expensive car in the world and it has been for some years now. What happens then if you really, really want to own one but you just can't afford the most expensive Ferrari in the world? Well, if your name's Will Tompkins, you spend 20 odd years of your life building the ultimate version of a Ferrari 250 GTO. And that's what that is there. My name's Johnny Smith, AKA Car Pervert, and this is The Late Break Show. This was an absolute labor of love. Now, what do you call this? Do you call it a replica? Do you call it a recreation? Do you call it a resto mod? I just call it the ultimate Ferrari transplant. What do you call it? Uh, I just call it a special. Yeah. Or, in, or to be uh, poncy about it, a speciale. Of course. In Italian, you know. Of course. Yeah. So, 575 GTO Speciale. Yeah, yeah. So, did you build this to historic race it? I'm you can't not race sure I was thinking about that. Uh, what what, were you what actually happened? I think I was, I think I was going to Brazil of all places. Of course. Well, I was married to a Brazilian girl at the time. Okay. And I uh, picked up a classic and sports car or whatever it was called then at the airport. On the plane, there was an advert for a 250 GTO alloy body shell. Okay. So, woo. And I had already bought a pair of 400 GTs, a crashed one and a burnt one. Now, is this when 400s were worth nothing? Oh, I don't know. I must have paid 1500 the pair. Oh, really? <coughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of money. They were up in Manchester. A friend of mine went and got them for me. Yeah. And I was trying to think what to do with them. I was going to make a special. I knew that. Yeah. Um, so I had the cars. I found a body shell. Yeah. You know, it's, oh, it's made, it's made by Scaglietti. Yeah. Actually, it was pretty shit. Was it? Um, <laughs> what can I remember? It was you metal, know? but it was... Uh, it was, well, we had the basic shape. Yeah. I mean, these, I think they were sort of angled up like that. <laughs> I remember the, this bit here was wrong. Okay. In fact, here's quite a funny story. We went down to Lord Brockett's place. Have you heard of him? He's the man that buried the Ferrari. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in those days, it's all, oh, yes, all these marvellous cars. And here's my original GTO. We went to look at it. And I knew straight away, because the guys that made the frame to go with the body had got that wrong. His car had that on it. It was wrong as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But I know that I, when I when I read about 250 GTOs, you know the, the consensus is it's it's considered the last dual purpose Ferrari. Yeah, just about. It's a fully fledged race car. Yeah. That kind of behaves all right on the road. Yes, that's it. And that's what I've just experienced then, really. I mean, Except okay, I've, I've this behaves my, even better, of course, because well, it it's got so much more torque. It's way more power. Yeah, way yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Talk of, talk to me about that. So the engines are 2002. Five seven five. Seven, five. Yeah. Um, so the original 250 had a 2.7? No, 3 litre. A 3. 3 litre, 300 brake at 8,000 RPM. And this is now 600 and... 601 at 8,000 RPM. Wow. The standard 575 is 510 or 515. That's right, yeah. So we just put decent throttle bodies on it, chucked away all the emissions stuff. <laughs> made some decent exhaust. Good exhaust, lots yeah. of them. So yeah. completely standard engine. Yeah. And we added 785 brake. Now this car has been built over 20 something years by a born out of obsession. But it is actually for sale right now. Um, it's for sale for just over half a million quid, which is obviously a shitload of money. Obviously, I'm getting hot, I'm in traffic. And it's a damn hot day. But uh, the transmission tunnel keeps burning my left thigh, uh, my left shin. Um, yeah, this is for sale for half a million quid. But of course, compared to the original car, compared to an original 250 or even a 250 GTO, that's nothing. So how do you see this? Do you see this as a bit an expensive uh, mimic? Or do you see this as a, a, a sharper tool a more of a more fun vehicle that you can actually use and go quicker because it's 600 not 300 horsepower i'm driving through a village and it, the clutch is all right my left knee's not spasming that little gear gate's wonderful i've got the thin wood rim ferrari wheel Honestly, this thing really, really feels so satisfying. And when I say hold yourself, on all of you, get ready to stop. is light but the travel is massive like really massive I quite like that I thought for a second it can't go any further than this this has got to be it and it it went a lot further I'm at a fuel station so I'm just gonna get some more juice in it ran out of petrol nearly. I've never had so much range anxiety in all my life and I've done it in what is basically a Ferrari 250 GTO. Uh, I thought the fuel gauge was faulty but no it actually had no fuel in it and I ended up coasting down a hill for 1.2 miles so I'm now running late on this shoot <laughs> because I very nearly ran out in rush hour in a Ferrari 250 bright yellow. So this is now a six-speed transaxle manual gearbox from that 575M car. The 575 came out in 2002. It was actually the first Ferrari to feature the F1 style gearbox, unless you ordered it with a six-speed manual, and that's what this has come out of. Apparently people like to crash 575M, so you can buy the engine and trans. I have never driven a 250 GTO, a real one, in my life, not many people have. And in truth, not many of them get used much, because they're so damn valuable. 
most of the 250 Ferraris you see racing in historic races around the world, like Goodwood Revival, and not the real car. No. They're recreations. The owners do own the original cars, but they don't race the original cars because they're worth 50 to 60 million quid. So, a bit of a gentleman's agreement, if you will. If you own the original, you can replicate your own car. And thus, people drive the beautiful, accurate recreations of the originals, which normally drive better than the originals because they're newer. Because yes, it's an expensive car, and yes, it was an expensive bill. But it's there to be used. The owner cannot bear this thing sitting around. In fact, the owner actively encouraged me, said, Johnny, just please take it out and thrash it. It was built to race. It was built to use hard. And I said, OK, but you know, I'm not going to break the speed limit or anything. And that's why I'm heading to a place where we can go a little bit quicker, legally. And in the meantime, just enjoy some British villages. who has subscribed and watched my channel from when it started at the beginning of 2020. It's been a tough year for everybody. I just want to say thank you so much. Um, the comments have been lovely and I very much appreciate what people have done. Let me know what you want to see more of. Because the late break shows all about variety. So naught to 60 is something like this, right? <laughs> an interesting thing like race guys will know but we experimented with lower trumpets yeah to try and keep this okay. as low as we could yeah and the horsepower difference if we went slightly long I think if we went 15 20 mil longer we gained a tiny bit of torque okay nothing at the top end if we went 20 or 30 mil lower yeah. it really started to kill it Really? Yeah, yeah, okay, because so obviously we were not, the original bonnet line yeah. is lower than this. Yeah. Uh, you might be wondering about the Perspex thing on here. How authentic is that on a Ferrari? Well, did, I know they used to do a lot of experimental stuff. No. No? Well, well they did. Yeah. But these are rife on loads of Ferrari, Testarossas, Dinos, yeah. racing cars. Yeah. All the all-out racing cars, 50s early 60s you'll see those but not on a 250 not on a 250 gto because the engine is shorter of course yeah but so you've reason. you've taken an, another classic element from another ferrari yeah yeah and married it on there and yeah. you've convinced well you convinced me when you're looking down that bubble yeah that little greenhouse yeah. uh, of uh of trumpets yeah i honestly thought on a hard throttle it's gonna just suck and vacuum form that yeah plastic well vacuum. actually <laughs> Because I, I do, I think it, it might have done a little that's, bit. That's pulling some air in. It's it is. To be oh, but do you have you noticed how the air filtration works? No. Oh my God! This is the best thing. I've never seen it on another car. The big deal for engine horsepower is cold air. Yeah. You understand as the air's warmer, power drops off massively. Yeah. So we needed cold air for this. Yeah. 
I also wanted to see those when I opened the bonnet. Velocity Normally, stacks. you can't have both. They have to be covered. Yeah. Look at this. That box is sealed oh, to the sealed. bonnet. Yeah, OK. And here, these two bloody great holes go down some massive filters, sucking cold air from just on the ground. Oh, yeah. Can you see it oh, in that big it, air box Does it there? suck it from those lower it sucks it from, deep? No, no. Well, it, we feed a little bit in from there, yeah. mainly from underneath. So it's cold air. It's filtered. It's the sexy velocity stacks being fed by ram cold air. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is it doesn't look, until you see the core packs here, yeah. that doesn't look modern. No, true. But what's lovely about it is this morning when the, the people pulled it out for me, gave me the key, yeah. is they just flick the key and it sits there and it just idles. Yeah, modern you know. electronic fuel injection, you can't beat it. <laughs> Welcome to the Late Brake Show. And talking of brakes, they're race brakes, so they're very numb and unresponsive until you get them warm. So you do have to do a bit of like trail braking for the first couple of miles of getting in it. So the idea is this car is actually more flexible than you think. Yes, it's a race car, it's got no soundproofing and it's very loud, especially the induction noise and those four shotgun tailpipes. However, in terms of the weight of the controls and in terms of the getting in and just kind of driving it normally, it's really nice. It's really nice because the gearbox is modern, the engine is flexible and fuel injected are modern. It's weird, isn't it? This uses the, the chassis of a of a Ferrari 400, which up until about three years ago, nobody wanted, nobody cared about. Because the value of classic cars has gone crackers, eventually the least loved Ferrari has gone up in value. If you want to know what it's like to drive an absolute fearsome beast like this, stuck behind an old person in a Honda Civic, Look no further. Look no further. I want to know what it weighs. Uh, about 1,100 kilos. Crumbs. So that's a lot less, I would say, than a 575M. Oh, they're probably heading a, up. They're probably 1,700. Yeah, and that does zero to 62 in four and a half, 4.3 seconds. No so idea. So what on earth does this do zero to 60 in? Zero to 60, you probably don't measure it very well. Mm. I did take it to Santa Pod once. I can't remember what time we did the standing quartering. It's got to be fairly quick. High tens, I think. Really? At 140, something like that. I said, anything I need to know about this car before I drive it, you know, behaviour, quirks. <laughs> it's geared for 200 miles an hour. That was basically one of the only, the few things that you said. Yeah, a little bit over, actually. Just yeah, a bit more yeah. than 200. I, I've... Which is the same, of course, the, five, the 575 did 201, 202? Yeah, thousand. I've never looked at the figures yeah. properly, or not for a long time. Years ago, of course, on the continent. Of course. Big, long motorway curves, and it was rock solid. Wow. Uh, at 190, you know, pushing it. My God. Of course, the problem with a car like this is the fact that you can't do more than 60 or 70 miles an hour out there in the real world. So that's why, on the Late Break Show, we have loads of budget. We've borrowed a runway for an hour. And we're going to take it on the runway and do more than 70. of what wire wheels well we make we we can make those exact wheels these are actually some original baranis from italy yeah um, the big deal is they have alloy rims yeah so there's two companies in the world who do them barani and torino and you are torino yep 
ours are better and slightly cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> There's your hard sell. Yeah, yeah, right there there. You go. I'm allowing yeah. you that. So. But on the one hand, you can take this racing. It's illegible for some historic racing, is it? Not really historic, but, but there's it's not, not an outlaw car is what I mean. Well, I mean, it's a bit naughty because it's an old shape with modern Absolutely. power. It's a resto so, mod in that yeah, respect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so resto mods, there's not really a racing category for them. See an increasing number of people are interested in classic cars from a visual perspective and you know the look and yeah. the you know the, the the sexiness yeah but the reality of a 60 year old gearbox is just like i'm, I'm out yeah or you yeah. know an overheating engine yeah whatever yeah the, but the way this is this 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 does away with all that it can be maniac quick if you want it to be yeah it is <laughs> but <laughs> But the great thing is you can just get in and the gears will work really easily. Yep. The clutch you don't need an iron leg for. Yep. The throttle's so pliable. And what about the, what were the seats like, John? I actually think it's really cool. I took the padding I mean, out. look at that. I took the padding. I know I do when I'm racing. I can't I, get my helmet on. No, that's the thing. So I, I, I got in it and drove it a couple of miles and I took the cushion out. But look out. what it is. It's a fiberglass seat, just a little this, bit of padding. Yeah. And, uh, it's really and nice. leather. Obviously we've made the interior as it would have been in an early 60s GTO. They tended to paint this silver. I couldn't see the point, so I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, are, is this a are these original Ferrari bits that we can see? They're replicas of original Ferrari okay. bits. Yeah. Um, actually, the original rev counter would have had a, uh, a telltale reset button. Okay. That one's a chronometric one with a, the original copy of the, of the dial. I've, so I've, you can I reset see it. It, it. ticks. Yeah. It, it ticks, ticks yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, the gear lever, of course, that's a six speed gate, whereas originally they were five. I like Otherwise, it. I it's about, say. well, what about the Dymo tape? Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's but great. That, that is how they were. But they were, race cars aren't, aren't, they aren't sexy inside, are they? No, well, I'm, I'm not trying to copy anything. I just like it yeah. like it was. Yeah. It's one of those things I, I just was always really interested in, especially early Ferraris. I mean, lots of other cars, pre-war, Mazas, everything else. And the more you know about the history, especially the racing, mm -hmm. uh, the more of your own spirit you can sort of combine with that and put into a special yeah. that you're making. Well, I, all I can say is thank you for insisting that I 
drive it. Well, thank you for insisting we let you drive well, it, Johnny. You know, you know. <laughs> but, well, the, the, I do have a voicemail from Will, which gives me strict instructions to only drive it badly and hard. <laughs> you don't get that from car owners very often. Well, if you bend it, we can mend it. <laughs> I've got B.O.